Hey there, my name's Devin. Uh, today I wanted to explain to you how the different parts of my adoptive family reacted when I told them that I found my biological family. Um, I'll cover each one individually, and if I can figure out how to do it, I'll put little chapters down at the bottom, so if you aren't interested in one family member, you can jump to another. All right, so let me start with my dad. Uh, and by the way, dad and mom, those are my adoptive parents. Uh, mother and father, those are my birth parents. It's just how I keep it straight in my head and when I'm talking about them. Uh, he actually had died a year, almost a year before I found my birth family, uh, but he played a key part in it. So when I was 18, I requested paperwork to be added to the registry, um, the adoption registry. That was the youngest I could be, uh, requested the paperwork, and then I sat on the paperwork for 10 years. And the reason I sat on it was uh, because of my dad. I thought and still think that he would have taken it personally um, if he would have found out or if I would have told him that I was looking for my birth family. Uh, I think he would have thought that he wasn't being enough of a father for me and that was pushing me to go find my, you know, my birth parents, which was, <laughs> this had nothing to do with him, right? He and, he and mom, great people, uh, did a good job raising me, gave me everything I, I needed. Um, but, you know, I had, I had questions. Uh, I was, I really wanted to know what my birth parents looked like. That was really, that was, that was it for me. Um, I, I wanted medical history, you know, anytime you go to the doctor and it says, do you have family history of this and this, it was always unknown. Um, so that would have been nice to know, but really I wanted to know what they looked like. And that had nothing to do with how my dad raised me or what he was, um, what he offered me growing up. But he's the reason I held off. And I, I think it was the right decision. Uh, I mean, I'm happy now with my relationship with everybody. So I, and I'm not one to go back and do play what ifs. You know, what if I would have done this or that? I'm really happy with where I am right now um, in life and all my relationships and my families. Um, and I think it, it saved him uh, some pain. So let's move on to mom. Um, we were living in different parts of the country, so I actually had to call her on the phone. And by the way, the, the timing of when I called her is when I found out I had, um, that I was gonna be meeting my birth mother and birth father. I'd already found out it was my birth father looking for me, and I'd found out that they had married each other after I was born, and I had two full-blooded siblings, uh, and no half-siblings anywhere. That's all I knew. Uh, I didn't know their name. I didn't know, I knew they weren't married to each other anymore. I think I knew that, but that was it. I didn't know anything else, but I knew that we were gonna be meeting eventually. So that's when I decided to reach out to my adoptive family and tell them. So different parts of the country, I had to call her up. Me calling her just that, I'm sure she kind of like, okay, what's going on here? Cause I am, one, I'm not a, let's call anybody and chat. I'm not a chatter. Now, the only person I talk to regularly on the phone uh, is my brother, Ryan. I'm just not good at talking on the phone and I don't know. Um, but me and mom did not have, um, we had a good relationship, not a great relationship. Uh, I'd moved out of her house when I was uh, 16 and went to go live with my dad uh, briefly <laughs> for a couple of, you know, several months. Uh, and then I, then I moved out um, outside of my family. So she was, as soon as she heard my voice, she's like, I'm sure she's like, all right, what is, what's going on here? Um, so I told her what I know. Obviously it, it took her breath away, um, but she's tough and very positive. She's the, the most She's annoyingly positive, <laughs> if, that's, uh, if that's a thing. Uh, so she was like, oh, Devin, I'm so happy for you. Um, and she said that, that may have been her fallback line, but she said that over and over and meant, meant it. Uh, she was happy for me. Never, remember this has now been 20 years, um, 
She's never, she's never told me or even, I've never felt that she was worried about how this was gonna affect her. Um, that's a normal feeling to, to think, okay, you know, what is this gonna mean for our relationship? Um, but she's never let on that. And I gotta tell you that from that call on for the next several years, our, that was the best that our relationship, um, that's the best that it's been, you know, ever. I mean, since I was, you know, before I was 10 years old. Um, and that, and once again, it's my fault that we don't have a good relationship. It was my fault that it, it took an upswing and that's because I really wanted to make her comfortable and that, hey, this, you know, she's not, my birth mother is not supplanting you, um, you know, your mom, um, nothing's changing that. Now we actually do live closer. Uh, once I found my birth family, they were back in Texas. I was living in another state, so I, I moved back pretty quickly within, I guess within a year and a half or so, or two years. Um, so now me and mom are six hours away from each other and she comes up every couple of months and spends a weekend with us. So uh, I wanna move to my, to Murr, which is my paternal grandmother. Uh, and she's who I had the tightest relationship uh, in my adoptive family. Uh, we were buds and spent a lot of time together. Never lived in the same city, but I spent all the summers um, with her. Her and my, both sets of grandparents, my maternal and, and paternal, lived close by each other and the two grandmothers were best friends. Even though they were night and day, they were best friends. So I, I'd go up and, and stay in their city all summer, uh, usually Christmas break too, and just bounce back and forth between their houses. I mean, remember when I'm, and I have to call, I'm doing this on the phone, and keep in mind that her son, my dad, just died here, you know, less than a year ago. So she's coming into this with some, uh, you know, with stuff on her mind already. And my dad was, uh, he was, <laughs> he was the sun in her sky. I don't know how to say it. He was, uh, he was her baby. He, she, uh, Always, anyway, that was a hard knock for her, obviously, uh, when he died. So now I've got to tell her that my birth father's looking for me. Um, and I, I, I wasn't nervous about this call. I was nervous with mom, um, but not, <laughs> not with Murr. She's a, she's a fighter and a survivor and positive and and upbeat and loving and giving and welcoming and every positive attribute you can give about someone she had that so on the phone uh mer i found my birth family uh my birth father's name was on the adoption registry and he's been looking for me. Um, he put his name on the registry, by the way, when I turned 18. So he's been looking for me for 10 years. And she's like, oh, Devin, you know, you know, what, what's his name? Where is he? What does he do? I'm like, I, I don't know. Okay, here's what I know. And I listed off what I knew. She's like, and then her next question was, okay, when can I meet him? I'm like, hang on. Okay. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't met him. And I bet she said, when do I get to meet them? Not just him, but when do I get to meet him? I mean, man, she was, she was, she was happy for me and excited for me, but she was happy for herself. <laughs> I don't know how to phrase it. She was super excited. I mean, she couldn't wait to meet him. Um, you know, I don't know. Who does that? Who's that welcoming? <laughs> That's crazy. So, uh, she was overjoyed. She was really happy. Um, she's like, have you told your mom? I'm like, yes, you know, called her, you know, an hour ago. She goes, and then you're gonna call, you know, my, my other grandmother? And I'm like, well, I don't know. She goes, you should let your mom do that. 
And I'm like, that's what mom said too. Um, her parents, so now switching over to the other grandparents, kind of going out of the order I had in my head. Um, they're also wonderful, awesome people. They were in a retirement home at this point near her. She goes, you know what, let me tell them. And I'm like, yeah, that'd be good. Um, they were lo loving, welcoming people, strong in their faith, strong in their community, um, strong with their family, our family, my family. Um, but they didn't like change. And it took it takes them longer to accept any change. <laughs> um, and I certainly tested that, you know, moved out of mom's house, then moved out of dad's house and my sister, um, I'll tell you about her shortly. Yeah, we tested their resilience to ch <laughs> their acceptance of change. Um, so just took Sam a little bit longer, um, but they're welcoming to everybody. <laughs> so mom told them um, and reported back, hey, it went well. They've always been uh, able to adapt and overcome. So on to my uncle. I feel like I'm flying through this. Um, strange. So my uncle, remember he's also coming with this. His only sibling, his brother died. Uh, and they had a good relationship. They had a real, they were tight. And he also doesn't like change. Um, he's good man, good father. He took it and, and rolled with it. And he was excited. He goes, we got to have him up here. All right. He lived in the same city as, as my grandparents. Um, and let me tell you, shortly after meeting my birth family, they all did spend their time up in the city with my grandparents and my uncle, um, you know, getting tours of the farm and, um, you know, you know, my birth father, <laughs> you know, a grandmother is just amazing. You know, here, you know, my father is staying in her house for several nights, you know, after she lost her son. Just, man. It's always the grandparents that get me, talking to, talking about them, whether it's my birth, Grandparents or my adoptive grandparents. It's uh, totally unexpected. Especially my birth grandparents. You know, all this time where I'm um, finding out, you know, about my birth family. And I was excited to, to find out that all the grand, all the, all four of those grandparents, right, both sets were still alive. And I was excited to meet them, but gosh, I never, <laughs> And I didn't make a strong connection with them. I mean, they were awesome. But, you know, now that it's too late, I should have called them every week and asked questions. I just told them that I'm thinking of them. And it was just a miss, missed opportunity um, to make them feel good and, to, you know, to learn about them. All right, now on to my sister, my adoptive sister, one I grew up with. She was four years younger than me. She was also adopted. And she found her birth mother uh, with, with my mom's help, our mom's help. Uh, and that birth mother, mother wanted nothing to do with her. So she's coming at this with some baggage, some wounds. That's, you know, that, that hurt her. That, that hurt her. Um, but I've never talked to my sister about this. Uh, she knows that I found my birth family. I'm sure my mom's told her, um, but I've never talked to her about it. Now my sister, four years younger than me, um, she ran away when she was 13 or 14. And she's been living on the street since then. And here she turns 50 uh, in a year. I talked to her, either talk or text, um, once or twice a year. She'll borrow a phone or maybe she, I guess she buys, I don't know, she buys a, you know, one of those prepaid phones. Uh, and 
on, I guess, most Christmases, you know, she'll, she texts. I think we've only spoken once, um, uh, but she'll just text me, you know, hey, Merry Christmas. You know, this is your sister. Uh, hope all is well. Love you. And then, you know, I'll text, and then we'll, you know, text back and forth. Um, but then that phone, you know, the phone is gone after she uses whatever, I don't know, 30 minutes. I don't know, I don't know how those phones work. Um, and then it's back into the black, you know, she's just disappeared into the void. Uh, and then, so some Christmases, and then she and I actually have the same birthday. Um, and occasionally I'll get a happy birthday from her and I'm, Happy birthday back. Hope all is well. And that's it. Uh, man, I tell you, I sure wish I could be there when certain members of the birth family see this. Because this isn't, they've never, I don't, I've never discussed this with them. Maybe if there was drama, maybe I would have brought it up to them. But my members of my adoptive family, it, it just, e they made it easy. Uh, made it easy for me. They're, So this will be one of the very uh, few instances where I'll talk about my adoptive family. Uh, this channel is about me and Ryan uh, together and what we share, right? We share our birth family. When I'm with my birth family for a holiday, um, I don't proactively bring up my mom, right? Um, they, they always ask, they all each, my sister will ask, a mom will ask, you know, how's your mom doing? Great, and I tell them, here's everything I know about what's going on in her life right now. but. I won't proactively bring it up. If I'm with my birth family, that's my focus. When I'm with my mom, she's my focus. I don't proactively bring up a uh, birth family, even though she'll go through it. How's Ryan? How's your sister? And she, she rattles it. How's each of their kids? She rattles through each single one. Um, and I'll give her a full, complete answer, but then, then that's it. I don't bring them back up while she's there. Thanks again. We've got more videos coming. I've got uh, one that I'm trying to work through. Uh, it's the uh, first letter that I wrote to our father uh, before, you know, we ever talked or met. Uh, I got to read that letter the other day. So uh, I'll share that with you, share some things that I, you know, should have done differently with it. So anyway, thank you. Keep the questions and comments coming. Um, they mean a lot to us. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Keep an eye out for more uh, adoption videos coming.